What's going on, y'all? We're back in the Bible bunker making another video today. This one is called The Seven Eyes of God. Um, just felt like I needed to make a video about this because, I, you know, just seems interesting. I didn't know if y'all might want to look into this a little bit with me. Um, if you go to Zechariah chapter 3, verse 9. For behold, the stone that I have laid before Joshua upon one stone shall be seven eyes. Behold, I will engrave the graving thereof, saith the Lord of hosts, and I will remove the iniquity of that land in one day. Zechariah 4.10 For who hath despised the day of small things? For they shall rejoice and shall see the plummet in the hand of Zerubbabel with those seven, with those seven. They are the eyes of the Lord, which run to and fro through the whole earth. Revelation 5. Verse 6. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. Now, we know that spiritually, God has seven eyes. We just pretty much prove that. Out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. We also know, I'm looking at my notes here, Jesus is God in the flesh. We know that. There's, well, you know what? Let's go Let's go read some of them because those never get old, do they? Hearing that and reading that and, and knowing that is the big thing. It, it never gets old. That's why I tell people a lot of times, it's like, I, I'm not a believer so much as I'm a knower. I know he's God in the flesh. I know it. I know it in my soul. John, chapter 1. I don't went past it. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Who's the Word? Jesus Christ. John 1, 14. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as the, of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. John 10, 30. John 10, verse 30. I and my Father are one. That's red letter right now. Jehovah's Witnesses, I hate that verse. John 20, 28. Might explain why they stick to Watchtower and not so much the Word of God, huh? And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God. Capital G, God. Not little g. John 8:58 probably my favorite passage in the entire Bible Jesus never said he was God blah 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 John 8:58 Jesus said unto them verily verily I say unto you before Abraham was I am There's no way to confuse that I don't care how much you want to try to deny that I mean come on man Colossians 2:9 I know I'm, you know, I'm just laying down, laying down the foundation here. I'm heading somewhere, I promise. Colossians 2, 9. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Jesus is clearly God in the flesh. Jesus is also the creator of. 
John 1, 3. Probably should have just hit up Colossians again, but I'm going to, I like to jump, I guess. John 1, 3. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Period. Colossians 1. Back to where we just left. How about that? Sixteen to twenty. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. And having made peace through the blood of his cross by him, to reconcile all things unto himself, by him I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. He's a creator. He's God in the flesh. We're made in his image. Genesis 1. I might be able to find this quick, y'all. How about that? Verse 27, so God created man in his own image, and the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. So he's God in the flesh. He's, he's the creator. We're made in his image. We have two eyes physically. So therefore, Jesus Christ had two eyes in his physical earthly state when he was here. And obviously, you know, sitting next to the father, he's two eyes. But spiritually, God has seven eyes. We've already established that. We have different organizations. Uh, some of it's organizations. Um, some of them are just idiotic celebrities who run around thinking that they're looking cool by wearing certain emblems and stuff. But there's a certain organization or two in the world that they have a symbol of a one eye. They, they worship a God that has one eye, all-seeing eye. Um, and one of these organizations, man, I mean, especially in this part of the country, it is, is very, let's say, very prevalent. And it prides itself on good works, you know, charity. Um, a lot of the folks that are in this organization, they have no clue what is actually what it is they're actually a part of. There's plenty of literature written by people much higher up in this organization throughout the years that pretty much admit that the lower degrees have no clue what it is they're a part of. And if they did, they, you know, even if you try to convince them, they wouldn't listen. And I, I personally know this to be a fact. You, you ain't gonna, you're not going to win that argument. You, all you're going to do is end up talking in a circle. But it's undeniable that... This group, and not just this one, but there is at least one other one. The, the all-seeing eye, uh, the, the God with one eye. Why is this significant? Well, I just established that the Bible says that God has seven eyes spiritually and that God in the flesh had two eyes, obviously, because we're made in his image and we have two eyes. So who has one eye? Is there anybody in the Bible that has one eye? Yeah, there is. It's the, actually the Antichrist. Uh, go to Zechariah chapter 11, verse 17. Let me see if I can get there without going past it. I think I went past it. Zechariah 11, 17. Woe to the idle shepherd that leaveth the flock. The sword shall be upon his arm and upon his right eye. 
His arm shall be clean dried up and his right eye shall be utterly darkened. His right eye will be darkened. I don't know if y'all ever pay attention to idiotic celebrities always taking pictures and stuff for magazine covers. They, they figure out some way to hide the right eye. It's, it's a tip of the cap. I mean, like, come on, man. Them people sold their souls. Y'all know that. I ain't got to rehash that. But this is actually, this is the Antichrist. The, you know, a lot of these folks, they, they belong to an organization that they ain't got no clue. All they know is what the propaganda they're told. You know, oh, we, we do good works and we look out for the poor and yada, yada, yada. But the, the Bible even tells us that Satan transformed himself into an angel of light and his ministers transformed themselves into ministers of righteousness. So, you know, that really don't impress me none. But when you look at the, the passage in Zechariah eleven seventeen, that also matches up perfectly with what it says in uh, Revelation 13. It talks about how the Antichrist will receive a deadly wound that won't kill him. Well, a deadly wound that will be healed, which almost makes you think that there's going to be some kind of counterfeit of the death, burial, and resurrection. Because, I mean, that's how Satan operates. He's a deceiver and he's a counterfeiter. But I just thought that was kind of interesting. You know, I, the seven eyes of God, I, I had never really seen anybody touch on that much. And it's just one of them subjects I always kind of find really interesting. So I hope you all liked it too.